This homemade ice cream recipe is sponsored by Squarespace. Get 10% off a website or domain name registration by using my link and code in the description. There's a lot of good methods for making ice cream without an ice cream maker. I've tried many of them, but this is my favorite, the two bowls method. It's pretty easy, it requires no special equipment, and it yields at least a couple pints of fantastic ice cream. We're going to start with an ice cream in its easiest, purest form, just sugar, cream, and milk. No eggs, no pre-cooking. Here in the U.S., we call this a Philadelphia style ice cream. I do think you can significantly improve it by trading in the milk for evaporated milk. The higher protein content in this gets you a smoother texture. Some people add dried milk powder to their ice cream mix. That's just a different route to the same destination. Here's a big 10-quart metal bowl, 9.5 liters. I don't think the material really matters. It can be anything. It's just got to be big. Inside is a 4-quart metal bowl, just under 4 liters, and I do think metal is best for the inner bowl. It needs to be something thermally conductive. You can do this with lots of different bowls sizes, but I think the outer bowl should be at least twice as big as the inner bowl. I don't think this next thing is essential, but it helps if you chuck these bowls and your ingredients into the freezer for like 10 or 15 minutes before you start. Okay, outer bowl comes out, and we need to fill it halfway up with ice. People say it has to be crushed ice. I have not found that to be the case. I think normal ice cubes work just fine. Into this ice, we need to stir a bunch of salt. Salt lowers the melting point of the ice, which will result in supercooled water wrapping around our inner bowl, chilling our ice cream. I'm just using normal kosher salt because that's what I have, and I'm eyeballing roughly one part salt to four parts ice. There is a product called ice cream salt you can buy. Some say it works better because the grains are bigger, which helps them disperse more evenly in the ice. I don't really understand that. I just know that this works too. I think the main reason to use ice cream salt is that it's cheaper because it's not intended for human consumption. It's full of impurities, which is fine because we're not putting it in the actual ice cream, hence cheaper. But I'm not making ice cream every day. I'm just doing this for fun, so I'm just stirring in the salt that I have. I'll nest the inner bowl into the ice and then pour in this whole pint of cream. That's two cups, 475 mils. We'll follow that with one cup, 235 mils of evaporated milk or regular milk. Any mixture of some kind of cream and some kind of milk will generally get you into the range of fat to water ratios that work well for ice cream. Then sugar, three quarters of a cup or 150 grams would be pretty standard amount for this much dairy. You could stop there. That's sweet cream ice cream, but I'm going to give it a huge glug of vanilla. If you were adding chocolate or any other flavoring, you would do that now. If you have chunks you want to put in, you generally wait until right at the end after you've churned it. Now we'll put a hand mixer in there and beat on the lowest setting for maybe eight or ten minutes. It's a long time. This is the tedious part, but it's not so bad. It's certainly nothing compared to old-fashioned hand churning. Try to work the edges with the beaters. After a while, some of the mixture might want to stick and freeze to the walls of the bowl. We need to make sure we get it off. Could you do this with a whisk? Sure. Go for it, Popeye. After a few minutes, this will start to get really fluffy, like whipped cream. In fact, it is whipped cream. A traditional ice cream churn spins much slower and therefore does not incorporate nearly as much air up front as this method does. Indeed, if you were to taste this now, it'd taste like Cool Whip. But don't worry, this is just phase one. After upwards of 10 minutes, I can feel the ice has melted a lot and my mixture doesn't seem to be getting any stiffer or colder or aerated. It's done all it can do for now. Now comes the genius step that I learned from Faith Durand at the kitchen. The whole rig goes in the freezer, the whole thing. If it doesn't fit in your freezer, you can just put in the inner bowl and then recharge the outer bowl with fresh ice before phase two, which is to take this out of the freezer after about an hour in there and then beat it again for just a few minutes. You'll see it immediately deflate into something that actually looks like ice cream. No, this is not how ice cream is normally made, but again, different routes to the same destination. You might need to use a spoon to scrape any frozen stuff off the walls of the bowl. We want to spread that cold evenly through the whole mixture. I suspect suspect what we're doing here is using the ice crystals that have formed in the freezer to pop all of the excess bubbles that we had in there, while at the same time we're breaking those big crystals down into smaller ones that'll be smoother on the tongue. If you didn't do this inside the ice bowl, the ice cream would melt way too fast, and indeed it is starting to visibly melt after about three minutes of beating, so we've done all we can do in there. Time to act fast. Pour this into some lidded freezer safe container. I've got a little over a liter or a quart of ice cream, and this is a one quart container, so I'm just going to eat the extra soft serve right now. Get this into the freezer as fast as possible and let it harden. Some people say overnight, I say 24 hours is better. If you don't let it harden long enough, it might look and feel frozen, but it'll melt really fast in the bowl. This is hardened for 24 hours and it's perfect. One reason to make ice cream at home is that it's so rare to buy a product this pure. It's just three or four ingredients and it tastes just so simple and good. I think the texture is right up there with any traditionally churned ice cream. Gotta get some sprinkles because I am a child. Now, that basic 
basic procedure should work with any ice cream based recipe you want to use. And let's do another one right now. Let's do a French style ice cream, which is actually a frozen custard. I'm separating out six egg yolks. That's enough whites for me to actually use for something. So I'll save those. Now, other than the yolks, our ingredients are the same. Three quarters cup of sugar, but split. I'll whisk like half of that into the eggs. The sugar helps break them up and get them smooth. And it probably helps on a chemical level to keep them from curdling later on. All right. In a little pot, I'll dump my remaining sugar and my pint of cream, and I will bring that to a simmer. Oh, and a pinch of salt really improves just about any ice cream. When this is simmering, I'll slowly drizzle it into my eggs, whisking to keep them from curdling. And now back into the pot, everything goes to simmer a few more minutes until it seems to thicken a bit. Off the heat it comes, and I'll put in my vanilla and my cup of cold milk. Yeah, it's just regular milk. We've got plenty of protein from the yolks. Some people would cook the milk with the custard, but I think putting cold milk in now helps to cool this down faster. We'll strain this into another bowl. Straining is not necessary, but you can see all the little chunkies in there. We'll need to cool this all the way down before we churn it. You got to cook your custard many hours in advance, which is why French style ice cream is a bigger deal to make. As I said, I think the main reason to make ice cream at home is just for fun. But another reason is if you have something really special to put inside your ice cream. And I have these beautiful peaches. These are from a tree my friends Heidi and Chris planted at their house. Absolutely beautiful. I'm going to peel those peaches. You don't have to peel them, but peach skins kind of taste papery in ice cream, and I'll just fillet the meat off the pits. This would be like three or four normal grocery store sized peaches worth. You could puree all that, but I want perceivable chunks, so I will chop it up and then scatter on some sugar and a little lime juice. The acid will keep the fruit from turning brown as we just let this sit here and let the sugar break everything down. After maybe an hour, I can smash that with a fork, and that looks really good. Chunks of fruit any bigger than a coarse grind like this will freeze solid and hard inside ice cream like little pebbles. And that goes to chill. And sometime before we churn, we need to take that peach pulp and squeeze as much juice as we can into the ice cream mix. We need to churn it with most of the water already inside it. Otherwise, this peach juice could freeze hard and crunchy. Alrighty, again, we'll chill that whole rig for 10 or 15 minutes. Time to fill up the big bowl with ice. And look at that. My refrigerator can crush its own ice. Crushed ice has more surface area, so it makes better contact with the salt in the inner bowl. But I don't think it makes that big of a difference. Stir in roughly one part salt to four parts ice, nest in the inner bowl, and get beating for about 10 minutes. I should say my recipe here is calibrated to the size of my bowls. This is the maximum quantity I can make with bowls this size. If your bowls are smaller, you would need to scale down the recipe accordingly. All right, that seems as cold and fluffy as it's going to get. The whole rig goes in the freezer again. An hour later, we'll beat it again for a few minutes and deflate it. When it seems like it's starting to melt, stop. And this is when you can stir in any chunks without interfering with the freezing or aerating processes. I'm stirring in my peach solids, but you could go with chocolate chips, cookie crumbs, go nuts. I'm getting like three pints there because of the extra mass of the peaches. I'll let those harden in the freezer for a day. And there it is, a Georgia June in a bowl, straight from the tree to my mouth. Absolutely delicious. A little cherry on top and ah, party foul. That French style ice cream base is noticeably denser and smoother than the Philadelphia style, but it's a lot more work and I'm not even sure if I prefer the result. Again, you can churn any kind of ice cream you want using this method that is almost as simple and easy as Squarespace. You need to make a website. There's no reason to freeze with apprehension. Squarespace has 10 million templates you can choose from and they're adding more all the time. That template is your churning rig and all you need to put in are a couple of simple ingredients, a picture or two and some words. Words. If the words aren't popping off the picture, you can darken or blur the picture using the built-in image editor. You can customize this to your heart's content, and anything else you could need, you can add via the system they call blocks. A product block for selling an item, a newsletter block for collecting people's emails, or maybe an open table block for taking reservations. If you want a custom domain for your site, you can register that through Squarespace, and Squarespace will host your site for you. You can get building for free, but when it's time to take it live or to register your domain, you you can save 10% by using my link and code in the description. Thank you, Squarespace, and thank you, Heidi and Chris, for those beautiful peaches. Let's look at that tree one more time.